So what you should be seeing on screen is a title that says Wrapping Closure Tooling in Containers or How to Show Up for... I want that mic. I want this mic? Both, yeah. Okay. Can you hear me just fine? Good. So what you should see is a title that says Wrapping Closure Tooling in Containers. Um, my name is Mark Mandel, or Mark Mandel, depending on how much of my Australian accent comes through. Um, sometimes I say funny words like caching uh, rather than caching. Uh, so if I do so, uh, my, my accent isn't quite as thick as Colin's, but um, it comes through sometimes. Um, I am a developer advocate for Google Cloud Platform. Um, they pay me to do things like this, which is wonderful. So thank you very much for having me today. And I'm actually going to skip slides so I can see it. Um, and I know where I'm at, but you won't be able to see anything. Um, OK, so yeah, this will work. So to set some expectation on what you should be seeing today, except you aren't, um, so we're at a Clojure conference, and that's fair enough. And we've been hearing a lot of good stuff about Clojure and all that sort of good stuff. Um, Today, we are not going to actually talk too much about closure code. In fact, you're going to see very little of it. Oh, you might see some if we get a demo up. <laughs> um, if nothing else, this is going to be hilarious for all of you. Um, but what we are going to talk about is two particular things. Uh, this is where you would see images of Docker and uh, new make. Um, so we're going to talk really about these two particular technologies and why I think they're really important. Uh, you want to see if displays are going to work? The answer is no. OK, so hands up here the people who have worked with Docker. Lovely. OK, so some of you haven't. That's fair enough. At the very least, I'm going to assume you've probably heard the name somewhere. Um, super light virtualization environment spins up inside, uh, inside machines super, super fast. You can do resource constraints. You can mount volumes inside it to share uh, hard drives and that sort of stuff. Really useful things. The other thing that I'm talking about today is make. Uh, make who here has written make files? More people than I expected. OK, cool. So um, that's great. So make, if you've never touched it, a really old school build tool where you can set up targets if anyone wrote ant back in the day or very similar things. Um, that's great. Still nothing? <laughs> Certainly. Um, so we're going to be talking about these two technologies in regards to um, how we want to use it to set up our tooling within containers. So on to my next slide. Um, why would we want to do this? What is this actually useful? So before I get into that, oh, actually, let me backtrack for a second. What, why is this useful? Why is it whenever I start a brand new project, regardless of what it is that I'm doing, the first two things I do is I create a Docker file and I create a make file before I've touched anything. So I'll backtrack for a second. I'll kind of argue with myself. Why, why wouldn't I want to do this? Why wouldn't I want to go through this extra complexity? Oh my god, we have something. Um, and the good reason for not doing this is actually tools like Linegan are really good. If you want to look comparatively to other languages, if you want to switch between, say, language versions in other languages, it's actually kind of tricky propositions. Linegan's really nice. You just change a dependency, and you're suddenly using Clojure 1.6 rather than 1.7. That's actually really sweet. Oh my god, yes! <laughs> <laughs> I have both HDMI and VGA plugs in. I'm not unplugging anything because for I'll fear of, for <laughs> I don't know what you did, but you're a genius. You OK, so if I, all right, brilliant. Oh, oh, we see stuff. All right, hold on. Let me set this up properly. And oh, now I actually need to boot up things. But that's fine. That's all good. We can do this. Uh, let's send that to 5 and hit 5. And OK, perfect. Um, can someone remind me what time we finish? <laughs> I've lost track of my higher brain functions with the stress. OK, brilliant. So why do we want to do this? Why do we want to go through this? And why are you sitting here in front of me today watching me flounder? OK, so like I said, Linegan's pretty cool. It does a really good job. We don't need to worry about libraries interacting with each other accidentally. The Java class path is really nice. These are all really good things. So why do we want to do this? Well, for me, the biggest reason is it's a really simple installation. Right? 
I can download a Docker image or build myself a nice Docker image that has all the dependencies that I need for this project that I'm working on, regardless of what those are. I don't need to worry about multiple steps that I need to install all the things. Yeah? About every six months, I go, I should write some closure script. That sounds like fun. And then I go, oh, yeah, I have to install Node. I don't have to do that necessarily any time now. I go back to a project I was working on before, and I say, oh, I want to work on this project again. I will just log into my Docker container, which has all the tools I have, has Node in it, all that sort of fun stuff, and I'm ready to go. I can continue working from there. It's got the version of line again on it that I want, the version of Java I want on it, which is actually much trickier to change. Um, it's pretty awesome. The other thing that makes this really nice is this Docker image is shareable, right? I can take that Docker image that I have for this project, I can share it with multiple people in my team. They don't need to go through 14 different steps to set anything up. It's all there and ready to go. Maybe you're working on something with, say, FFmpeg or maybe ImageMagick. They don't need to worry about what version of that they're running, any of that sort of cool stuff. And when I say team, I also mean your local team, but this could be open source contributor teams as well. You know, you want to have a, a standard build environment that runs all your tests without them having to go through four steps to install all the things. This is actually kind of cool. Finally, you know, we're functional programmers, so things that are immutable are good. Uh, Docker environments in of themselves are, are relatively immutable. We can control what part of those change. We can mount a volume into them and say that's where our source code lives and that's the bit that changes, but all the other stuff around it, that stuff stays relatively the same, which provides us with a nice environment where we have a little less of, oh, that works for me, but it doesn't work for me because I'm running maybe a slightly older, slightly newer version of something else. We have to, it makes it much easier to coordinate all that sort of stuff. So since I have a screen, who would like to see a demo? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to have to do this from scratch because um, I haven't actually set anything up. So let me, where are we, control shift, make that a little bigger. And send that to five. Uh, two. That's better. Okay, so we'll do this over my shoulder, which is fine. Um, okay, so here we have my local machine. Um, I don't have Linegan installed. And if I have a look... I have Java 1.7 because reasons. So what I want to do is I want to come into a shell where I have Linegan installed and I have Java 8 installed. So let's do that. Uh, let's go into make shell. We'll make it quiet because I don't want to show off my secret source just yet. I'll hit enter. And that just been on my Docker container. Brilliant. Um, cool, that should be fine. Um, and now if I have a look at my Java version, I'm now running Java version 1.8, so that's kind of cool. I also have access to Linegan, so let's actually create a whole new app. Let's uh, bring that back up to the top. We'll create ourselves a Composure app. Composure, hello world. And we're going to do it in this local directory because I've got it all set up and ready to go. Um, if we have a look right now, let me, hold on, let me create a new thing. If I go back to my host, have a look, I've got some setup there. Let's run that. That should take a second or so. And then once it's done, and have a look, I've got a whole composure project. I can have a look at my, that there. If I come back to my host, that's also there as well. So I've gone from having the wrong Java version of what I actually want, uh, not having Linegan at all, to suddenly having all my tools available and ready to go for this project without having to install anything locally, which is kind of cool. Um, if we want to actually, we can run this too. So let's go line, uh, where are we? Line ring server headless. Oh, that should fire up in a sec. Thank you. And we come back to host. Now, Docker will, if you're not familiar, will take those local ports that we've got and forward them onto other ports. Um, I will, I actually have a make, a nice little make thing that does that. Nope, oh, that sent it to the wrong one. Do, do, do. There we go. And so we have Hello World, and it works. Great, okay. Let's move forward, because we have limited time, and I have so many cool things to show. OK, so how do we actually do this? Right? So that was kind of cool. It was neat, lovely. How does that actually work? 
So the first thing that you do is you create a Docker file. Uh, I'm going to guess min many people here have written Docker files? Mostly. Uh, not all of you. OK, cool. So we'll work, walk through it. Um, this is generally what you sort of start with. Um, this is sort of how it would work. So that from line across the top is what you normally do. Is like that's your base image. That's where you build from, right? And we're basically going to say, give me the standard Java uh, JDK. Give me that, and I'm going to build from there and add some stuff on top. From there, I'm going to install Linegan pretty much as you would do normally. The interesting thing to note here is we need an environment called line root equals one. Docker, when it's installing everything, does everything by root. Uh, Linegan tends to complain at you if you do things by root. Um, so if you don't set that environment variable, it will say, no, I will not do that. Uh, we run it. This is important because when you first run line, it downloads a bunch of stuff for you, and we'd like that inside our container rather than have it run every time. Uh, I have a convention of everything I write uh, tends to run in a slash project. Um, and I set an environment variable down the bottom of port so that my Composure app knows which port I want to run it to. And we're able to build a Docker image from this. It's Docker build, and it creates an image, and we can do stuff with it. So that works pretty well. Um, what I then do is I create this make shell target. I like make as well, especially because it outputs exactly what it runs. Super easy to debug. So um, this is basically just runs the image. There's a few cute things in here worth noting. Uh, dash V is a volume mount. So it basically says, I'm going to take what's local to my machine, and I'm going to push it into the container. Um, important ones to note there, we're volume mounting .m2, which is our Maven repository. We don't want to keep downloading the internet every single time. We want to install something, so that's good. Um, I've actually also got a profiles.clj for my user profile for Linegan. I mount that in as well, uh, so I can change that locally, and each project can have its own user profile CLJ, which is kind of nice as well. Um, again, we could do that a slightly different way, but this is kind of nice. Uh, that current path variable you see there is something I've set up in my make file. This is all on GitHub, so you can see how it all works. Um, I tell it dash it to make it interactive terminal, um, and I tell it to run zsh inside my shell because zsh is awesome. Um, this is pretty good. Um, so for those of you who run OSX, which is probably most of you, um, this probably gets you 99% of the way there. Um, for people like me, where you will have to pry my Linux out of my cold, dead hands, um, you'll run into some small issues here, and I just want to cover those really quickly. The issue you run into here is that um, Docker by default, or Docker runs as root on your host system, as well as deep by default runs as root inside the container. Um, we can debate whether that's a good idea security-wise later. But um, that means that anything that Docker really touches means it's owned by root. Uh, this can be kind of frustrating when you're writing code. Say you do a line new composure, and then suddenly all your source files are owned by root, and that's not so much fun because you have to ch own anything all the time, and it sucks. OK, so how do we solve that problem? Um, I will give you one solution very quickly. I'm going to kind of skip through it because of time. Um, there's a variety of ways of solving this. The way I like to solve this is rather than immediately firing up ZSH, I create myself a nice startup script, um, and I fire that off itself instead. What I then do within that startup script is I basically make a whole new user that mimics my user on my host exactly. Um, if anyone's played with Linux permissions, your username and your group have a unique ID behind them. As long as those unique IDs line up, everything is golden. It thinks they're all the same. So we do exactly that. I will show you how to create these environment variables in a sec. But I create a group and a user with exactly the same IDs. Um, I can do some extra work here, because we're actually going to be working as the same user as we have on the host. So I copy all my all the lining and stuff we downloaded previously into the right spot. I see it own it, so it's all good. And Sue switches users from what was root into a actual user that we're set up. This is also a little bit more secure, which is nice. Not that we're worried too much about local development for that. Uh, we add the startup.sh. There's an add line inside our Docker file, so when we build it, that's included. And then we run it. We change things just a little bit so that you can see dash e. Those are our environment variables. Uh, those pass through the unique IDs for group and user. Uh, we now mount the m2 directory slightly differently, but everything else stays relatively the same other than we run startup.sh. So great. Now we've solved our permission issues. That's awesome. We can continue on our merry way. We can also attach shells. I just want to bring this up real quick. I won't demo it because of time. Um, you saw me bring up a single terminal. And if you saw that I was being, um, I had something running in there, I can actually go to another terminal and say, oh, I want another terminal here. And I can continue on my merry way. Docker exec is a really handy tool that basically says, in a running container, I'd like you to run this, please. 
So in this case, we're saying in the running container, please run uh, another version of ZSH under my user, and it just creates a whole new, a whole new one. Okay, so I finish at, is it 40 past? Nobody knows? Somebody's gonna know, crowdsource this thing. 45, so I got 10 minutes. All right, cool. Let's run through this real quick, because this is the cool stuff. This is where it gets fun. All right, so we've got a, we've got a shell. That's awesome, I really like it. Uh, but this is where we hit a bit of an interesting roadblock, which is we need tooling. Like, we need to be able to edit our code. And suddenly we've shifted all our stuff off our local machine into a container. What do we do then? So we have a couple of interesting options here. Uh, and I want to go through a couple of them. The first one is stick your editor inside your container. That works. Um, that's actually kind of cool, because it means then you can have a standard config that lives inside a container. It could be project specific too, which is kind of interesting. Um, and then again, that's shareable. You can hand it around. So let's do that. And I've got that in too. Yes, brilliant. So let's come back to my show. We'll cancel that, because we don't really care. Um, and we could just say Emacs. Oops, I can't spell over my shoulder. Emacs, project.sitj. OK, so we have Emacs. Um, that's boring. So let's kill that, because GUIs are way better than, um, GUIs are way better than running it inside a terminal, because then I can have mouse support and a bunch of other stuff. So let's do that instead. Um, so let's do that. Let's go over here, and I have a make command, strangely enough, called make Emacs. And what's it going to do is I am going to tell it to connect to my container via SSH and fire up Emacs, please. There we go. That's a little small, but now we have Emacs. And I'm going to do this over my shoulder. Because I'm not an Emacs guy, so I don't know any of the shortcut keys. There we go, project. And pick a file. I can't see it. We'll say anyone, doesn't matter. Uh, work. Nope. Oh, there we go. And it doesn't want to do it. Okay, we'll ignore that. We'll pretend like it worked because the demo gods are not with me today. But that's okay. So we have a GUI running from inside a container. Now, you may have seen some other demos where people run GUIs inside containers, but I will tell you that this will work cross platform when it works, apparently. <laughs> So, anyone heard of this tool? Wow, a few people, way more than I thought. Okay, so this is really interesting. Um, and this is something I started playing with and I started saying, okay, can we really run a GUI inside a container? I've played with a whole bunch of different ways of doing this because I went way down the Docker rabbit hole. Um, and while Expert can be a little bit finicky and I'm running a bit of an old build of this because reasons, which should hopefully fix the bug we saw there, um, it's really interesting. So who here uses like Screen or Tmux? Lots of people, right? So the nice thing about Screen or Tmux, right, is it runs with a server. You can run things inside it. And if you disconnect from that session, you can then reconnect, which is really cool. And those things are still running. Extra is that for X11 applications over a socket, which is pretty slick. Um, so it can run over SSH. It can run over directly over a socket. But the other cool thing is it runs on Linux, it runs on Windows, and it runs on OS X. So yes, it is a little bit finicky, but if you want to be able to run GUI applications inside a container, I find this is actually a reasonably reliable way of doing it, and it's kind of cool. Um, sort of looks like that. Uh, extra start, starts a little session inside the, um, inside the container. The cute thing in here to note, I would say, is uh, exit with children says that any running processes that are running inside that extra session then uh, kill them if everything dies. So in this case, if we shut down Emacs, the whole thing shuts down, doesn't leave it hanging around. The other nice thing is it has a variety of encoding formats you can use. I set it to PNG because I found that worked best with text. Um, it's got some ones that are more like sort of, uh, what is it, VP9 or VM9. Uh, there are more video-based codecs that kind of get blurry when you scroll a little. Um, I find that works pretty well. OK, five minutes. Perfect, we have just enough time for this crazy stunt. Um, so this is all well and good when you run your, con your editor inside a container. Um, but I'm not an Emacs guy. I'm an IntelliJ guy. I love cursive. I think it's amazing. Thank you, Colin. Um, and I don't want to run it inside my container because I don't know reasons. Um, maybe I could. Maybe it doesn't work very well. I actually haven't tried it <laughs> with IntelliJ. Um, I probably should at some point. 
Um, but this is a nifty trick that I worked out, works really well, uh, especially on Linux. I'll be interested to know if it works on OS X because of the way Docker Machine works. Um, but what I want to be able to do is take the Java version that I have inside my container and any other resources I want and be able to basically pick them up and put them outside my container. Right? Volume mounts don't work here inside Docker for this because volume mounts only go from host to inside the container. So the way we can do this is actually through SSHFS. So if you don't know what that is, it's a fuse mount that lets me basically mount anything I want that I can connect to via SSH, which is really, really powerful. So how does that work? So I can create myself a little, uh, I have a make target, strangely enough, that runs SSHFS and goes and points itself at the directory that hosts the JVM inside my container. And I decide to mount it nicely somewhere inside my temp directory. Um, and this works really well. The only really cute thing I found here is that I need to write dash o follow symlinks. Reason being that the SDK has a bunch of symlinks in it, and unless you tell it to follow them, they point to completely the wrong places. If you do that, then they point to the right places, and everything works really, really well. So let's have a look at that. And I'm actually going to have to fire up IntelliJ, because uh, I think that's the right command. Yes, because I haven't got it running before. We have three minutes for me to show you a REPL using a JDK that runs inside my container. Oh, and this is going to be hilarious sitting over my shoulder. OK. Uh, which case, I will do that instead. That's better. Lovely. OK, let's switch into presentation mode. You can see what's going on. OK. So the first thing we'll need, I've got this project already set up. It's ready to go. Um, I need an SDK. So let's actually do that. Uh, if we go into our project structure, if you're familiar with it at all. I had one before. It's dead. So let's create a new one. We'll create a new JDK. We'll go into temp. Uh, oh, I need to mount it. My bad. Make mount. Cool. Search password better. There we go. Now it's mounted. JVM, Java Oracle, OK. It seems pretty happy, so that's good. Let's hit OK. Let's fire up line, my line window. There are no line again projects there. Why is it not seeing my line project? Ah. Let's add the project. All stuff I would have done beforehand. OK, so this is going to index. It'll take a little bit while it's going. Lovely. Done. Right click. Run REPL. This is where the magic happens. Spinning, spinning, spinning. OK, so if you can see that top line there, you can see the JVM that's being used is actually Java 8. Right? That's not my local Java 7. That's running from inside my container, and it works perfectly. If I have my handler, go away. Down, shrink, thank you. Let's load that and switch to its namespace. Uh, normally I spin things up, but I'm not going to do that here. And I run it. Then I can actually see that my app's there and I can do stuff. Normally what I do here is I actually spin up, I install uh, Aleph and then I spin up the actual server and run the code and edit it and do that stuff. But you can, you can trust that it works. OK, so very quickly in conclusion, because I know we need to finish up. Um, OK, so what we did here very, very quickly in a much shorter time than I wanted to, we were able to containerize all the developer tools that we had for this project that I set up here. And we were able to go from an environment where we didn't have Linegan installed, we didn't have the Java version we wanted installed, we could download an image or install an image, and we could get up and running pretty quickly. We could also install either editors inside our container, or we could have editors outside our container, depending on your environment and what you're doing. And this is something we can share around with either our team that's local, our team that's remote, our team that's open source. We can actually do some really cool things. Um, Finally, very quickly, just like to thank my employers, uh, Google and Google Cloud Platform. They pay me to come out and do fun stuff like this and hang out with 
all you awesome people. Um, if you want to reach out to me at compoundtheory.com, please feel free. I'm more than happy to take any questions on any of this stuff. All this source code is up on GitHub as well. There is the URL up there once more. I will be here for the rest of the conference. And thank you once again to the conference for putting on this event and uh, putting up with my machine that didn't want to work in the time that was allotted. Um, I open up the floor to absolutely no questions because we don't have time. Um, but I will hang around, and I will be just outside the door if you want to ask me anything. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>